After everything I've done, you don't want to talk to me. Talk to me! I can't be the one who I've done. Talk to me! You've done nothing. You've done absolutely nothing. Nothing for me. <laughs> this is my God! Why don't you answer me? Why don't you answer me? I can't make it easy. I can't make it easy. it all from here. What, a nice establishment you've got here, eh? Calm down. You heard nothing. In the blacks. You heard nothing. <laughs> what have you done, Charles? If you can give me
gave me a choice, Joe. They didn't make you. You caved in. It was you who convinced Mr. Hobbs to let abolitionists live here safely on the property. And you practically led them over the hill. So I'll ask you again, Charles. What in the fucking hell have you done? It's George. That's her. That's her word, eh? Please, Edward, give me the bottle. The drink never helps you. <laughs> well, I'll not endure another blast in you. Oh, oh, fuck. Oh, I'm sorry, my love, for my language. You know, my cousin is just carry over from the from the bad days of India. And you did nothing to stop it. You just stood by and watched innocent people slaughtered by British soldiers. And then those which the soldiers write about in fucking agony from your filthy diseases. Well, if you're telling me this is what hell's going to be like, I believe you. Please, Edward, it's not your fault. Stop punishing yourself like this. I'm sorry, my lord. I'm sorry. But I just need this bottle. Oh, what? Just take this bottle. <laughs> no more drink, my husband. No more reliving bad memories. <laughs> what the hell is that? Hello? Ah, uh, sorry about the hour. Message for Constable Denny Day, Mum. Quick, get my sword. I'm not getting your sword. Evening, madam. Letter here for your husband. Thank you. What is it, Margaret? There's been a massacre at Mile Creek. Where's that? I don't... It says you are to investigate an incident and make any arrests necessary. You won't go on your own. Nebo, the half-caste, he'll be here in the morning. It says there are potentially 11 men to arrest. Will you two be enough? You'll never see the Lloyds of Constable Danny Day. Has there been another incident, sir? I'm afraid there has, John. Uh, a rather brutal one in the Hunter River region involving the Wurrawari tribe. Now, I've not received a detailed report as of yet, but word footing through indicates that this encounter involves some of the most horrid acts of savagery ever perpetrated against humanity. Now, when all the facts are in, I expect you to prosecute those responsible to the full extent of the law. We're all air tribe, eh? They have been very compliant of late. Prosecution of any of their tribe will be the first for a long time. Well, John, if my informants are correct, he won't be prosecuting any member of any Aboriginal tribe. So, I'd be prosecuting white men for crimes against blacks. Yes. Now, as you know, I have many enemies amongst your fellow members of the New South Wales Legislative Assembly. Are you expecting vigorous opposition to any prosecution directed towards the white settlers? <laughs> that is an understatement, if ever I've heard one. Some of these men will, will stop at nothing to, to protect their interests. They appear to have the full support of the newspapers as editorials criticize any attempt to legislate for freedom and justice and equality. And you, John, 
you must look to the physical welfare of both you and your family. Now, I don't want to scare you, but at the same time, I, I don't want you to be unprepared for any threats to your life. Your Excellency, I don't wish to appear impertinent, but I did grow up as a Catholic in Ireland, so I'm no stranger to bigotry and violence from an ignorant ruling class. Indeed. servant's work. Well, Gabriel, just because I'm a magistrate doesn't mean that I'm useless at everything. But the government pay me to look after you. And I don't want you telling them I didn't do my job right. Indeed I wouldn't, Nebo. Indeed I wouldn't. You're doing a very good job. It's just that I've always liked to contribute to things, even since I was a child. It's a bit like when you're playing with your friends and you're learning to take turns. And you're learning to play by the rules, even if you did make them up yourself. I wouldn't know about that. I used to watch all the other children playing in the river. And hiding in the trees. But not once did they ask me. Not once. Maybe, maybe they were all nervous. Maybe they, maybe they taught. No, no, boss. Nobody wants to play with a half caste. Well. I'd forgotten how cruel people can be. See, I was the son of a Protestant clergyman in Ireland. So I know what it's like. What? You was Irish half-caste? Uh, well, no, no, not... That's... I'm just saying that I was a foreigner in my own neighbourhood. That's all I'm saying, Nebo. Hmm... Children as well. Maybe even a baby. They were killed over there. And then brought here and dismembered and thrown on the fire. That large rib cage there. It would have belonged to Daddy. Daddy? He was considered to be the leader of the group. 
We're gonna find Thomas' daddy. He was a large man. We have only belonged to him. Joe! You murderous bastard! You killed them! And you stay there and say nothing! You are a coward! You're new in town, ma'am. Ma'am, you're new in town. Um, yes. What brings you here? Um, my husband's work. What's that? He's not a driver. He won't march a pretty little thing like you across the country. The only new people rumoured to be coming to town are... Wait. You're not them black lovers, are you? Is your husband the one investigating that so-called massacre of them heathens? Is this all you're purchasing today, madam? That'll be eight pence, thank you. Yeah, they're going up in price. Yes, they just went up this morning. <sighs> Good morning, ma'am. I'll have what she had. That'll be sixpence, thank you. I thought it went up in price this morning. Oh, no, I must have made a mistake. That'll be sixpence, thank you. Constable Denny Day to see you. Do enter, Constable Denny Day. Your Excellency. Hey, come here, Constable. John here is to provide the prosecution for the Mile Creek case. Well, it should be a pleasure working with you, Mr. Plunkett. Won't worry out that this will be a very straightforward case. I'm going to see the sort of the crime myself, and unfortunately, I can confirm that these events did take place. You saw all bodies? Well, what I saw wasn't good. A lot of remains have been disturbed by scavengers. We respect how we proceed, Mr. Bunnett. Sir, I still believe we have a strong case for prosecution of the suspects. That's right. We have credible witnesses. The manager at Moyle Creek Station himself, William Hobbs, and a hand, George Anderson, have both promised to testify to what they saw. They both saw the massacre. Well, no, but they did see the aftermath. That may not be enough. This is a very unpopular trial already. We are attempting to convict white men of a crime against black people. We are up against some hard world. This may even be thrown immediately out of court before we even hear your man's testimonies. But wait, why do you have in custody one Charles Kieran Moister? Now, Charles Kieran Moister is a hand to Mole Creek property. He himself was involved in the massacres. We well, believe he'll testify, but he's already given up the names of the other men accountable. By the grace of God, that is excellent news. He has, man, he said. He has identified the other culprits. Hi, sir. I want this man of protection in his face. Life will be in danger. Your next task, Constable, 
is to arrest the remaining men and bring them before courts. And the way he says, Dave, we have a message to you. Tell your husband to drop the case. Or something bad, mate. Hmm? He's not responsible for the case against him. Well, tell him to talk to those who are responsible. Drop it, all right? And then maybe we'll let you go. Constable Denny Day, then you're all under arrest, and I'm taking you back to Sydney on the charge of murder. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't murdered anyone. This is about the massacre at Moyle Creek. Massacre? This is a joke. We haven't murdered anyone. They're animals, you see. Not human. Well, I think we'll let the courts decide that one. Congratulations on the arrests. Thank you, sir, Jim. Yes, indeed, good work. I hope it went smoothly in without incident. Oh, well, yes, mostly. Half of my returning and fighting out if my wife got a visit from a stranger intent on scaring us so we don't pursue the charges. Really? She didn't mention anything to me about uh, such a visit. No, oh, she's a proud one in your excellency, and she would have kept it to herself until I returned, which happens to be the case, then. I bet it's the group I would refer to. Do they harm her in any way? Oh, no, just a very good scare to pass on to you. Say, who's this group that you talk about? After investigating, we have learned that there is a secret group that is done for the purpose of gaining the acquittal of all men charged in this case. They are responsible for paying the defence lawyers and all associated costs. They're known as the Hunter River Black Association. There's no shortage of uh, willing contributors amongst the lovely landowners, and Mr. Henry Dangar is 
and the driving forces behind it. Now, there is to be no retaliation against this group. This is to be fought only in a court of law. Do you understand? Or you do. Good. Good. So, let us prepare for court. Is this something we need to do? Wait, it's just one bottle of grog. I'm not talking about the bottle. I'm talking about arresting these men. Oh. Look, while you were away, I was talking with my father and my brothers. Oh. You know they're oh. high up in the civil service. They know what's going on in the colony. You should tell Governor Gibbs that you want nothing more to do with it. Wash your hands and walk away. Hey, for what reason? Your father's head is a personal service. How does that qualify him to give me advice? Maybe if I were sending a letter, he could give me advice. But on topics of human injustice! He says Governor Gibbs has been making a lot of enemies in the colony. It's me, boss! Me, ball. Is it them? I'll get your sword. That's all right, dear. This is Poopy, boss. She's from the Wiraita. She was at the massacre and got away. She was brought here after we asked around for witnesses and survivors. That little girl survived the massacre. How did she get here? We bring her inside. She was brought here by a group of outsiders. They want to see justice done, boss. Well, take an evil. And what are you doing? You're staying outside your town with your own people? They're not my people, remember. Besides, I'd rather sleep in a bed. We just wait right here. I'll be back in a moment with some soap. <laughs> My God, that atrocious organization, the HRBA, must have raised a significant amount of money. That barrister, Richard Wendoyer, is one of the most expensive in the colony. And I heard they've engaged two others, William Foster and William A. Beckett, both charging a small fortune for their work, no doubt. Wendoyer is also a wealthy landowner from the Honda River District, so he probably knows Henry Dangal very well. Do they need all that for your power? How strange is that, please? We haven't charged them on all counts. How big gone is the charge against them of throwing an Aboriginal man known as Daddy on the fire? He was so big a man that his body would be easy to identify. And it would have taken nearly all 11 of them to throw him on that fire. This case, gentlemen, is very important to the colony. And I hope you will not let any comments in the newspapers affect your judgment on so important a matter. Murder is regarded as the greatest crime in all civilized nations. Although these men are only charged on this occasion, with the death of one man. There were, in fact, a total of 28 persons. Innocent men, women, and children who were slaughtered in an hour of abominable cruelty. I am pleased that the accused are being represented by capable counsel. But it has been brought to my attention that this defense has been arranged by a secret society. 
illegally formed to fund the defense of all who may be charged with killing black people. If this is so, it is obviously intended to encourage the bloodshed of all black people in any way possible. I will now call a witness. There were 50 blacks at the station that had been there 10 to 12 days. They were cooperative and peaceful. I left to another station for a few days, leaving Kilmeister and Anderson in charge. On my return, I went to the stockyard where I found a lot of dead bodies. I want to know who was here, George. I want to know every last name. There was one large body without a head that I reckoned to be daddy. But it was hard to tell if it was a man or a woman. There were a lot of small skulls that were obviously children. I went straight to Kilmeister, told him how I felt and how angry I was. He told me the blacks had been spearing the cattle I checked. None were missing or injured. None of the cattle were missing or injured. As you said, these people had been peaceful and cooperative. He told me the other men tied up the blacks and took them up to the stockyards where I found the bodies. He denied going with them. We ended up receiving information at the end of June about a situation at Moyle Creek, which occasioned me to visit the area and inspect a stockyard on the property belonging to Mr. Henry Dengar. There appeared to have been a fire of great circumference, and within it were many bones and fragments of bones. We examined the case, and I arrested those prisoners over there. We still found it difficult, though, to obtain information from other parties that I perceive as possessing knowledge of this occurrence. About 10 men rode up to my hut where I was talking to Kilmeister. They called Kilmeister out to have a few words with him. They asked where we were keeping the blacks. They said they wanted to give them a bit of a scare. There they tied up all the blacks who had been sitting there peacefully. I marched them off over the hill to the Isle Stockyard. Kilmeister went with them. I noticed all the lighters were carrying swords. They kicked and beat quite a few of those poor devils as they went out of sight. When the station hands returned the next day, they were all under the control of a man called John Fleming. They stayed in my hut all night, laughing and bragging about what they had done. And then Fleming ordered them to clean up the stockyard and remove any evidence before anyone could examine it. Never seen Fleming since. Mr. Winder, do you have any questions for with us? None, Your Honor. I am very keen to get to closing statements. Not questioning the witness for their defense? What is he up to? Does he know something that we don't? Mr. Mother? I have one more witness, Your Honor. There are no more witnesses written on my list. I'm sorry about that, Your Honor. It was a last minute change. All right. Let's get on with it. I would like to call Koopy of the Werowee tribe. She was a witness and she escaped the massacre that was taking place. Koopy!
is absurd, Your Honor. She cannot take an oath on our final. Mr. Bucket, you are not allowed her as a witness. But she was there, Your Honor. She escaped. Mr. Planet! As Attorney General, you would know that any testimony from your witness would be inadmissible in a court of law. Where an oath on the Bible would mean nothing to somebody of no faith. So any statements you may make could not be taken into consideration. The legal principles surrounding this issue may need to be discussed by legislators in another place. But at present, I have no alternative than to deny you your request. Bailiff, Please remove these two people from the courtroom. Now listen here, Missy. I don't know how you got away the first time, but it ain't gonna happen again. Right? Wait, sure, I'll have you over it. What? This is what? Oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 We'll do, boss. Oh, come on, Miss Lock. Listen to this editorial. I look on the blacks as a set of monkeys, and the sooner they're exterminated, the better. How can we convict a white man of killing an Aboriginal person? Colony spoken, my friend. What happened to your face? You're bleeding. I have to be honest with you. I'm finding this case very off-putting. I've dealt with all sorts of criminals and the desperate measures they will adopt for survival. But to find that I'm sharing a footpath and exchanging pleasantries each day with people who would slaughter innocent women and children for their enjoyment, it staggers me. Aye. Well, you've never served in the British Army, have you, John? No, no, I haven't. But you have, haven't you? You... Served as an officer in India, I believe. Lieutenant Denny Day of the 67th Regiment of Foot. You must have seen some bloodshed. Did you ever witness innocent people being killed? Witness it. I ordered it. But why? Because I was ordered to order it. That must have been difficult for you. How does a man deal with something like that in his life? Oh. Let me get you another. Gentlemen of the jury, there has been a lot said today about what might have happened on the day this chap by the name of Old Daddy was allegedly murdered. But I haven't heard one person claim to have identified any part of Mr. Daddy's person in that tangle of body parts. Mr. Hobbs claims to have known the man very well, but he stated that 
he assumed the body to be that of Daddy, even though he couldn't even tell if that was the body of a man or a woman. My goodness, are we going to convict these eleven God-fearing men on such flimsy evidence? For all we know, Mr. Daddy is alive and well, and dancing in the royal court of his good friend, King Sandy. <laughs> this trial has been an absolute waste of time. And I am sure you will all agree that a verdict of not guilty is the only possible outcome. Learned counsel is correct in stating that a man cannot be convicted of murder or manslaughter until a body has been identified. So you must decide whether the body found was that of daddy or of a person unknown. Time now for the jury to decide. Now we wait. We, as the jury, find them not guilty. Your Honour, these men are not free. We still have many charges against them. Order, 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 quieten down. These men have been found not guilty. Order. They should be free to leave. No, Mr. Windyer. They are not free to leave. If I were to do that, they would never be seen again. I grant that the trial will be held on those other charges. The accused are to be held in custody until it commences. This is garbage! We are innocent! You'll pay, Dave! Your people will pay! Yeah, we are free, man! Yeah, 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 let us yeah, free, yeah. I say! Let us free! Your Honour, I ask that the witnesses also be placed in protective custody until the next trial. Let me get that for you. No, no love, no more. Edward? <laughs> oh, you failed him. Oh no. <laughs> yes, we failed him, Margaret. This next trial will yield the same result. They'll be found innocent, and good people have died again for naught. No, Edward, you've served well and did what was asked of you. These are the court rulings. They're not your fault. You have no power over that. Well, there's not much that I can control. You can control this? You can control how much of this you have? You can control this? You can control how much of this you have? You never quit, Denny. You never have. You don't get to quit on me now. <laughs> I'm trying, Margaret. You're nearly there, my love. You've always had a plan B. A reserve. A last resort in the face of adversity. Where is that man I know so well? Are you sure you're talking about me or about someone else you met? Come. Let's get you cleaned up. Nebel mentioned he had something that might help. Okay, my love. Charles. Charles. I want to help you, Charles. No one can help me. I 
Oh, yes, I can. I need your help. I need you to tell me what happened that day. You know what happened. I need you to tell me again. But I need you to tell everyone. Even the judge and jury. <laughs> You're mad. If you think I'm testifying against white men. Against ex-convicts? Which are going to leave men? We all got enough experience in prison. Know just how easy it is for a man to get killed in there. You wouldn't go to prison, Charles. You're our only witness. So if you testify against the other man, you'll be pardoned. You'll be free. I'll never be free. What we did was a terrible thing. And we probably deserve the full length of the law, but right now, I'm between the devil and the deep blue sea. If I testify against white men and get my freedom, I'll never get a job. I'll be hounded out of every white settlement on this colony. I don't think you realise, Mr. Plunkett, just how much power landowners like Henry Danga have in this colony. I'm sorry, Mr. Jaila. Don't sit down, Mr. Day, we've got work to do. Judge Burton has just given us two hours to round up some more members of the jury. Only half of those subpoenaed for jury duty have bothered to turn up. And the few of them I want to challenge. I've seen them openly talking to Henry Dangar. He must know everyone in Sydney, but we have to recruit a few more applicants if we're going to make this thing work. Well, we best get to work. Hi. Sir, I've got a trial and I need you to be part of the jury, sir. Would you like to help me? Excuse me, I've got a trial going on in town and I'd like to... No. 
Gentlemen, have you heard about the trial that's currently going? Have you heard about the trial that's going on, sir? Could I get you, please, to be a part of the? Don't lie to your wife. Have you heard about the Boyle Creek trial? Ah, Could I get, get you, lost, copper? But please, no innocent women no. and children. I can't get involved. I know the trial. I... No, no, leave my store. Go. I'm out of time. It would be easy to ask if there is anyone you don't owe money to in town. You're sweating. Oh, would have something to do with bath water. Would you fall over? Flying horseman you are. We don't have enough people. The last you remember I was interviewing is probably in the pocket of every person on the east coast of Australia. Or one shot if I give this man up and if I use him. I fear a similar result to the first trial. Well, I asked everyone in town, everyone. All right, Mr. Plunkett, your two hours is up. Trial must begin. You have to accept your last jury member. Time is up. Trial must continue. People of the court, the commencement of this trial, I hereby declare, is now... Oh, wait, Your Honour, no, it's the, it's the man from the store. Oh, Your, your Honour, uh, Your Honour, I'm, I'm sorry, we, uh, we dismiss this man and we have our final member of the jury. By the skin of your teeth. This trial is now in session. <laughs> yeah, I, I go rough them up all the time. What, blacks you say? You got blacks. Whereabouts? Not far. How many are they? About 30. So 30 you say? You take us there, right? Yeah. Hey, let's get let's... going, eh? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Kill him! Kill him! Do it! I was also told that Kilmeister there had been riding around for a few days with a gang of armed men looking for as many blacks as they could find. I could not believe this was true. But when I found the massacre site, I knew that it was. The stench of so many decaying bodies. Still makes me physically ill. Kilmeister begged me not to report it, but what more can a human being do? Mr. Anderson, that is twice now I've heard your testimony. And I continue to be surprised that you can only tell us what you assume happened. Don't your workmates ever share information with you? I mean, have you ever done anything to show you can't be trusted? I don't know what you mean. Well, your record shows that you've been punished twice for not carrying out your duties. Fifty lashes, I believe. Yes, but... And why were you transported to New South Wales in the first place? You already know why. I would like for you to tell the court, Mr. Addis. I was accused of stealing money from my master. But it isn't what it appeared. <laughs> no, of course not. It never is. So, 
Your master in England couldn't trust you. Your master here can't trust you. Your fellow workers can't trust you. But you expect this court to believe the greatest fantasy story that I've ever heard! My goodness me! No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Dangar, you've heard the evidence of your other servant Anderson in this barbarous massacre of innocent people. What do you say to that? Well, I wouldn't trust a word he says. Kilmeister is the most reliable employee I ever had. Anderson was the worst worker I ever had. I know who I'd believe. Yes, I've heard that you had him lashed several times for abusing the trust you placed in him. You must set very high standards for both yourself and your employees. Well, it's no more than my civic duty. As a leading landowner of high repute, it's my responsibility to set the community standards. Which is exactly what the governor was thinking when he suspended you from public office ten years ago. For registering public land in your name and when discovered, you offered a bribe to have it covered up. And then, the Secretary of State decreed that you were never to be returned to public office under any circumstances. I was only suspended. I was not dismissed. I was not dismissed. Mr. Dangar, I would suggest that if a decree was issued that you were never to be reinstated, then it would tantamount to a dismissal. Some may say that, but the truth is... Yes, and they'd be right. Mr. Dangar, I'm getting very annoyed by your equivocation of the truth and your obvious bias. People of the jury, Mr. Dangar has shown, by his avoidance of the truth, and by his financial contributions to the legal defense of any white man accused of a crime by a black man, that he is by no means an unbiased witness. Let us hope you take that into consideration when weighing up the evidence. I'd like to take this opportunity to point out the thanks this country owes to Mr. Day, the police magistrate, who traced the perpetrators of this barbarous crime to bring them to justice. And I might add that he did so whilst being strenuously opposed in the execution of his duties by those in the community who should have been assisting him in his endeavours to seek justice. People of the court, we are now nearing the end of a very long and difficult process. You have been gathered at short notice and have heard all the testimonials and evidence. Am I correct, learned counsel? Has all evidence been presented? There is one more item, Your Honour. Your Honour, and people of the jury, has been confirmed by a colonial doctor as that of a bone of an unknown child. It was found amongst the pile of human debris at the site of this unholy massacre. This bone is one of many that were found in the pile of charred bones at the Mile Creek Station. This bone belonged to a child no more than four years of age. Members of the jury, it is now your turn. Take all the evidence and testimonies into account. You did a great job, John. We both did, Constable. We fought the good fight. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honour. And what say you? We find the defendants not guilty. <gasps> <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. You didn't let me finish. However, 
on the charge of murder against an unknown child. We got them. We find the defendants guilty. You got them. We got them. Sir, it's finished. All guilty. Well, it most certainly isn't over. But maybe, just maybe, it's a good start. to see the hangings. I know, Mr. Plunkett, I've seen enough of those in my lifetime. Of course you would have. How about a celebratory drink? I think I've seen enough of that also. Thank you. Fair enough. We made history here, Danny. This will change the way things are done in this colony forever. Well, I just hope those that died are never forgotten. It's a small step in the right direction but the world has a long way to go. You're right. But look at how far we've come already. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is today's Sydney Gazette. Listen, 
we must express our disgust at the Hunter River landowners for continuing to fight for the acquittal of these barbarians, even though it was made obvious in the first trial that they were guilty of the most heinous crimes imaginable. What is more galling is that these pillars of the community put every obstacle in the path of Mr. Denny Day, whose lone voice would not be silenced in its quest for justice. Well, it's good to see you, neighbour. I was hoping I was going to find you before we left. Would you do me the honour of travelling back with us? No, boss. No? What will you do here? There's plenty of work up north waiting for me, I reckon, right about now. Well, in that case, thanks for everything. Your much-needed help and your brilliant company. I hope our paths cross again soon, Nebo. I hope not. Because it means more people being killed. But, of course, it'd be good to see you two again one day, so. Nebo, where's your family? Where do you call home? Half caste don't have family, Mrs. Boss. We don't got no people or no home to go to. <clears throat> well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure people like you. If a fellow not black and he's not white, then he's different. But thank you for your kindness. Thank you. 